Amazon Bedrock makes it really easy to combine generative AI foundation models in with your own applications. And in this video, I'm going to show you just how quick it is to get started. Hello, my name is Mike Chambers, and I'm a senior developer advocate for Amazon Web Services. Now, Amazon Bedrock has a vast collection of different foundation models from different leading AI labs around the world. Let's jump into the AWS console and see how we can get started. So here we are in the AWS console page. I'm going to type in Bedrock to the search at the top, click Amazon Bedrock, and of course, I get to the Amazon Bedrock console page. Now, Amazon Bedrock is available in a number of different regions around the world, and the list of those regions is growing all the time. So do check out the region menu in the top on the right-hand side to see if Amazon Bedrock is available in your region, or just select a region which is gonna work for you. I'm using US West 2 here, so Oregon, where all of the Amazon Bedrock features are currently available. Now, let's open up the menu on the left-hand side, and what I want to show you here is how you can actually get started with your application development inside of this console page, because this is not just about configuring the actual service itself. You actually get access to documentation, to sample code, and the ability to be able to experiment with the models, which is what you probably want to do at the very beginning of your project. So towards the top of this menu on the left, we can see providers. And if I click on that, I get to see an overview page which talks about all of the different model providers that are available inside of Amazon Bedrock. So we have AI21 Labs, Amazon, Anthropic, Cohere, Meta, Mistral AI, and Stability AI. And it's worth checking back on this page from time to time because just like the region list growing, the number of model providers grows as well. Now, if I choose a particular model provider, so let's say I choose Mistral AI, for example, then I get to see an overview page of all of the different activity that this provider has inside of Amazon Bedrock. Now, if I just scroll down a little here, past some examples, I actually get to the model cards for the models that are available here from Mistral AI. It shows you the model, it gives you a description of it, and it gives you a sense of what you could use this model for. So here I can see information about Mistral 7B, Mistral 8X7B Instruct, and Mistral Large, all here in the console. Now if I scroll down just a little bit more, you can actually see an API request. So this is some sample snippet of code that you can use in your own application development, getting you started really quickly. Now, Going back to the menu on the left, the next thing I want to do is scroll nearly all the way to the bottom. So if we scroll all the way down, we find this link called Model Access. So if we click that, well, this does a couple of things for us. One, it shows us in a neat little list every single foundation model that's available inside of this region for my account. So I can see AI21 Labs, Amazon, Anthropic, Cohere, Meta, Mistral AI, and Stability AI. And you'll notice that it says access granted for all of those models. That's because I've requested access to these models and it's been granted inside of my account. Now, if you're arriving at Amazon Bedrock for the very first time, or if you're visiting again after a new model has been released, then you'll want to come here, click on Manage Model Access, and then check the box next to any of the models that you want to enable. If you scroll over in my view here, you can see the link to the end user license agreement, so make sure that you agree with that. And then if you do, you can scroll to the very bottom and click on Save Changes but I've already got access to all my models here. It should take no more than a minute or two to have all of the models accessible in your account, or at least the ones that you've requested access to. Okay, let's go back to the menu on the left-hand side, and I just wanna show you one more thing inside of the console before we actually start to write some code, and that's playgrounds. So there are three different playgrounds available here. We've got chat, text, and image, because there are multiple different kinds of foundation models available inside of Amazon Bedrock. We can generate text, we can generate images, we can generate text from text, and we can generate text from images. And we've also got embeddings models as well. So there's a broad collection of models to choose from, and the playgrounds allow us to experiment with some of them. So if I click on text, which is the middle of the links, this is about as simple as it gets. And I'm pretty zoomed in here. So let me get rid of the menu and we can see it a little bit clearer. Now here I can select the model that I want to experiment with. So let's say I'm going to choose Anthropic and I'm gonna choose Claude 3 Haiku, which is a really fast and capable model. So I'm just gonna click apply down the bottom 
And now I can type in a prompt and I can see what the response will be. So let's ask it a question, my standard question. What is the capital city of Australia? Now, I'm fully expecting this model to be able to get this question right, and that's not really the point in this particular case. Um, I just want to see how fast the response is and how verbose maybe the response is. So I click Run, and pretty quickly I get the response back from Claude 3 Haiku. Now, you might have noticed that there's all of these configuration options over on the right-hand side. So if you want to change things like the temperature, top P, top K, and other attributes to do with the configuration, then you can. So this is where you can start to experiment around with prompting right here in the console without writing any code. Now, this is just a very simple text interface. If we want to have a go with a chat modality, so having a history of a conversation where we talk over time, then I can go back to the menu and try out the chat playground. Let's collapse the menu on the left-hand side again so that we've got a little bit more space. So here I can select the model. I'm going to, again, select Anthropic and say select Haiku and press Apply. But I can also click Compare Models, and if I do so, then I get multiple models that I can chat with at the same time. So I can compare and contrast and see what the difference is. So let's select another model, and in this case, I'll select Anthropic again, but this time I'll choose Opus, which at the time of this recording, many people are saying is the most capable large language model out there today. But it might be just a little bit slower, so we get to compare and contrast here. So let's ask that question again. What is the capital city of Australia? Whoops, there we go. And I'm going to press run. And when I press run, it will actually send that prompt to both models simultaneously. And so we get to see the difference between the two models. And you see the haiku response was pretty quick. And Opus, well, it's going to catch up. But it's a much bigger and more capable model. And I can scroll up on both of them and compare the answer. Now, again, this was a super simple question that I was asking. And probably what you want to do is experiment around with different kinds of prompts with different kinds of prompt structures. So you can actually put a whole bunch of data in here using some in-context learning and some all of those prompt engineering techniques that you have. Experiment around and select the models that you want to take as candidates onto your application development phase. And that's what we're going to look at next. So let's look at how we can use the AWS SDKs to work with Amazon and Bedrock and bring it into our own actual application. And to get you started writing your own application code, there's loads of documentation, so don't worry. I'll pop a link for this page in the description beneath this video. But code examples for Amazon Bedrock using AWS SDKs, you can see down in this list that we've got a whole bunch of things that we can do with the Amazon Bedrock runtime. So AI21 Labs, the Claude models, both Claude 2 and Claude 3, Mistral AI, Stable Diffusion to create images, and more. So you can always come here to find code to help you get started pretty quickly. If I jump into Anthropic Claude 3 text generation, and then you can see as well that we've got sample code here for both JavaScript and Python. So it's not just Python. In fact, you can use Amazon Bedrock with any language which has a supporting SDK, or if you want to just integrate directly with the API. So let's jump into Visual Studio Code, and I'll show you really briefly how you can connect to Amazon Bedrock and trigger a text generation. So to start off, let's import a couple of libraries. So I'm going to import Boto3, which is the SDK for AWS. And I'm also going to import JSON as well, because the structure that we get back from the model endpoint will be in a JSON format, in a JSON string. So we're going to create a bedrock um, runtime object. And we're going to do that by calling Boto3 client. And we're going to ask for a bedrock hyphen runtime. That's the API endpoint that we use to actually work with the models themselves. And then we're going to select the particular region name that we want. And we need to make sure that we're choosing a region that the models are enabled in. So let's choose US West 2, which was the region that we were working in. Whoops, there we go. OK, so now I've got my client defined. I now need to work at the payload that I'm going to send to the client. So uh, first of all, I'm going to define a prompt. And my prompt's going to be my standard question. So what is the capital city of Australia? 
But I need to wrap this up in some of the keyword arguments that I'm going to send to the model. So I'm going to create um, uh, some keyword arguments. And to actually know how they're defined, I'm going to jump back to the AWS console page and grab some of those code snippets that we were looking at before. So again, from the menu on the left-hand side, I'm going to click Providers. Um, and then I get to choose which model it is that I'm going to work with. So I don't know. Let's have a go with Anthropic. And let's choose Haiku. And if I scroll down, then I actually have here an API request. Now I can click this and say Copy Code. And then I can go back to Visual Studio Code. And then I can paste that payload into here. Now, there's a couple of things to note from what we've just pasted in here. Uh, first of all, you can see all of the different configuration. But also, in the actual messages, because this uses a messaging API, um, it actually has, uh, inside of the content, um, an image as well as some text. So the Claude 3 models, you can actually send an image as well as text. But in this very, very quick example, we won't do that. So I'm going to remove that so we just have some text. I'm going to remove this particular piece of text here, and I'm going to replace it with my prompt. So that will be where we have what is the capital city of Australia will be put into there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is that this section here actually needs to be sent into the model as a JSON string, uh, not this data structure here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to type in JSON dumps, open up that bracket, and close that bracket there right down at line 26. And that's going to make sure that that's passed in as a string. OK, so we've got our keyword arguments defined. So now let's um, send that to the model endpoint. And we can do that like this. So I'm going to create a response. And I'm going to say that that's equal to the bedrock runtime. And we're going to call invoke model. And we're going to pass into that. Well, Code Whisper has got it, the keyword arguments. OK, so at this point in the running code, we should have a response back from the model endpoint. So now what we have to do is unpack that a little bit. And we're going to grab out of it a body. And Code Whisper has got the right idea here. The body is inside of the response, and we do need to read that object out. I'm just going to also use JSON here and do JSON loads. And that's going to grab the response from the model and bring it in as a data structure that I can use inside of Python. So let's just print that out. I'm going to print body. And look, that's it. So the key thing to know here is that invoke model on Bedrock Runtime is the single API endpoint that you need to invoke any of the models on Amazon Bedrock, like any of them, image generation, text generation, embeddings, any of them. The difference is the keyword arguments you send in. And those keyword arguments include the model ID. And remember, we got that by copying and pasting it out of the Amazon Bedrock console page. All right, let's go and see if our code works. I'm going to press Run. And there's the response that we've got back from the model. The capital city of Australia is Canberra, and indeed it is. And we also have the rest of the payload that we got back from the model as well. OK, that's how to get started with Amazon Bedrock. It's really quick to be able to integrate foundation models into your application because you just need to hit the API endpoint. There's nothing to provision. You just go. If you found this video useful, then please do give it a like. Consider subscribing to this channel and sharing it with everybody you know. And just one more thing. If you are interested in this topic, then check out community.aws. It's a place where I write blog posts, but you can write blog posts there as well. So create an account, write up the projects that you're working on, and share it with the rest of the community. Community.aws forward slash generative AI is where you can find a curated link list of all of the best articles to do with generative AI on community.aws. So please do drop by and say hello. And until the next time, keep on building.